Starlink just doubled the price of their mobile global service plan. It was $200 a month, but now it's $400 a month. It's a pretty bizarre move, but I have a couple theories as to why they're doing it. So I thought I'd make a video talking about that whole situation and why I think that Starlink is doing this. I have a few details that I haven't seen really shared or talked about anywhere else. And also in the video, you know me, I'm not gonna leave you empty handed here. I'm gonna not only talk about the details of this whole situation and why I think they're raising the prices, but I'm gonna give you a solution. If you're one of those people that's been affected by this price doubling, I've got good news. You can actually get the same, basically the same plan, a better plan for much cheaper than the new price of Mobile Global. So I'll be covering that as well in the video. So if you're not already aware, the Starlink mobile plan, AKA Rome, has two different flavors. You can have regional or global. Regional works within your same home continent. So for example, if you lived in the United States and you subscribe to the mobile regional plan, you could use your dish in Canada or Mexico. It's within the same continent, it will work and you'll be able to get a connection. Global, on the other hand, works in between continents. So basically you have global access with your Starlink dish. And before this recent price hike, the mobile regional plan cost $150 per month and the global plan cost $200 a month. But now the mobile regional plan is still the same price at $150 per month, but the global plan is now $400 per month in the United States. That's a 100% price increase or double. Starlink sent out an email communication to those that were subscribed to this mobile global plan, letting them know that their prices would be increasing. But the email is short on details as to why Starlink was doing that. So in this video, I wanna offer my own opinion on it, speculate as to why they're doing that. So let's jump into a couple of the driving factors that I think is pushing this. So really what I think it comes down to is two main factors. Number one, Starlink's trying to simplify their service offerings. And number two, Starlink is trying to alleviate some of the pressure that they're feeling from some of these governments of countries that Starlink is not currently available in yet. So let's talk about point number one. As far as simplifying their service plans go, there's a couple of pieces of evidence there as to why I think that's a driving factor of this. So if you get onto the Starlink website today, and you go to the Rome page or to the boats page, which are in the main menu of Starlink.com, you see that you don't even see any references anymore to the global version of the Rome plan. It's gone from the website. Even if you click on the service plan page, which lists all the service plans for Starlink, it is not there either. In fact, you can't even order it anymore. So if you click on Rome, your only option is the mobile regional plan. The mobile global is not there for you to order. I did check on my account though, and I could actually still change my plan to global. So it still exists and you can still switch to it. However, Starlink is clearly trying to avoid signing up people, new customers at least, to this plan. So I think what they're trying to do is simplify their service offerings by just pushing people into the mobile priority service plan, have one roam plan, and then the next step up is that mobile priority. So to my second driving factor, I think Starlink is trying to kill off this global roam plan to help alleviate some of the pressure they're feeling from governments where Starlink is not currently available. And it makes sense to eliminate this plan because there's really, if you think about it, there's really three types of customers that are on this mobile global plan. So the first one is, you know, that world traveler. You know, if you're using your Starlink dish on land and you're moving in between continents, different countries all the time, that's a very small percentage of people out there that would actually be doing that, using it in that use case. They exist, no doubt about it, but I'm sure that's a very small amount of customers that are subscribing to that plan for that reason. The second reason that people would subscribe to the Global Roam plan is if they're in the sailing community or the maritime community, the Global plan gives you access to coastal waters and marinas, even though it doesn't give you ocean access, but a lot of people stick in those coastal waters and they just need service when they're near land anyway, and Global Roam gives you that for, well, it used to be less money than the mobile priority plan. And the third main reason that people subscribe to the Global Roam plan, I think is the most common. People just use it to circumvent the Starlink availability requirements. So in countries where Starlink is not yet approved and not yet sold, you can use Global Roam to get around that. So if you bought, purchase it from another country and you import it into a country in an unsupported country, you can actually use Global Roam to get internet access in that country. And Starlink has recently had several instances of local governments where Starlink is not yet approved, having requests sent to Starlink to actually cease operations there. So these governments are putting pressure on Starlink 
to cut off the customers that are using Global Roam in their country where Starlink is not supposed to be operating. And of course, this kind of ties into the whole situation in Africa where Starlink actually sent out letters to customers threatening to cut off services if they kept using their global plan in those unsupported countries. So now it looks like they're actually just trying to kill off the plan altogether. So based on those two factors, Starlink wanting to simplify their service plans and trying to alleviate pressure by from offering this global plan that can circumvent local government approvals. I think those are the two driving factors as to why Starlink is trying to kill off this global plan. Now, what's kind of bizarre and interesting is why would they double the price? Why wouldn't they just force people to switch to another plan? Who knows? Again, this is just my speculation, my opinion. We're not gonna probably hear anything from Starlink as to the official reason. I guess we'll just have to wait and see what happens. But if you're one of the people affected by this price hike, I have some good news for you. So you don't actually need the global roam plan to be able to do what you want to do with it. There's another option. You could subscribe to the mobile priority data plan. Now mobile priority starts at $250 per month for a 50 gigabyte mobile priority data allotment. Now I think a lot of people are confused about the differences between mobile priority and the global roam plan. So let me break it down for you a little bit. So mobile priority, you get a higher data type, which is called mobile priority data. You get 50 gigabytes of that for the starting plan. However, after you exhaust that 50 gigabytes or whatever data tier you subscribe to, you get unlimited mobile data. And it's actually unlimited mobile global data. So in other words, if you subscribe to any of the mobile priority data plans, it's the same plan as the mobile global, except it has a higher priority and it offers more features. So you get in-motion capabilities, you get ocean access, and after you've exhausted your allotment, you just have a regular mobile global plan. So as far as a price comparison goes for the United States market, with the new price of global mobile being $400 a month, the mobile priority starts at $250 a month. So really, if you switch to mobile priority, you're just facing a $50 price increase, which is still pretty significant, but a lot less painful than a doubling of your service price. You can switch to that mobile priority plan by just going into your account dashboard and hitting the change service plan button. If you don't see that available uh, and you're a new customer, you, I believe you have to wait now 30 days in order to flip into your second billing cycle and then you'll be able to change your service plan. And finally, if you just don't see it all together, even after the 30 days, you can always just cancel your service, wait for the billing period to end, and then restart, reactivate your service on the mobile priority data plan. So have you been affected by this price hike? What are your thoughts on it? Did you know about the whole mobile priority deal that you can switch to that instead of using global mobile? Let me know what you think in the comments below. I'd love to chat with you guys and we'll see you in the next video.